Hi, my name's Alison and I've been helping Jonathan and Chris with the tour for the last couple of weeks. My job now is to take you on a whistle-stop excursion from the end of the book of Exodus to where we will be at the beginning of next week, the start of the book of Joshua. So this is a very brief overview of the next three books of the Bible that were all written by Moses and that we are just dipping into this week, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. At the end of the book of Exodus, the people are camped at the foot of Mount Sinai. The tabernacle, which is a very large but movable tent, has been pitched in the centre of their camp and God's presence has come down to fill it. Right at the very end of this book, Moses tries to go into the tent. He is not able to because before anyone can enter into God's presence, sin must first be dealt with. The storyline is disrupted at this point to bring us the book of Leviticus. This book is a blueprint on how to worship a holy God and live a holy life. God's holiness is described as a pure, powerful presence. Think of it like the sun, pure power that is both good and dangerous. The book of Leviticus shows us how it is possible for someone to enter into God's presence without being destroyed. And this is by the offering of a sacrifice. The opening chapters of Leviticus are a handbook for the priests. God sets out detailed instructions of all the priest's duties, including how to offer sacrifices and of the kind of worship that pleases him. Next, Leviticus becomes a guidebook in which God gives clear standards to the people as to how to live holy lives. They were to be separate and distinct from all the nations that surrounded them. And in the final part of the book of Leviticus, there are the instructions for all their national holidays. Celebrations and festivals play a major role in their culture. So besides enjoying one Sabbath day of rest each week, the people were also to enjoy a further 19 days of celebration every year. The narrative picks up again in the book of Numbers. This book records the tragic story of Israel's unbelief. As it begins, the nation of Israel is at the foot of Mount Sinai, where they've been camped for more than a year. And they're now preparing to move on to the land that God has promised them. But they grumble, whine and complain at every turn. At one point, the people even try to appoint a new leader to take them back to Egypt. So instead of moving ahead in faith, they refuse to enter the land that they have been promised. And because of this, God gives them what they want and declares that this generation will not live to see the promised land. Instead, they will wander in the wilderness. When we get to the end of the book of Numbers, the rebellious older generation have passed away and we find the new generation camped on the banks of the River Jordan with the promised land in their sight. And this is where the book of Deuteronomy begins. The 40 year journey through the wilderness that could have lasted just 11 days has come to an end. And the new generation is preparing to enter the land. But before they do so, Moses has some important advice for them, which he delivers in three parts. And it's this advice that makes up most of the book of Deuteronomy. Moses starts by giving the people a brief history lesson in which he emphasises God's care for them and God's mighty acts on their behalf. He then goes on to review the laws which were given at Mount Sinai and he reminds the people of the consequences of disobedience and urges them to obey. In the final part, Moses calls for commitment. 
appealing to the people to honour the promises that they had previously made to God and to choose the path of obedience. At the end of this book, Moses, knowing that he is about to die, prepares the people for his departure and commissions Joshua to be their new leader. It's Joshua who will now guide them into the promised land. We have seen over the past few weeks how God gave Moses the power to develop from being a stuttering shepherd into a national leader and a powerful orator. His courage, humility and wisdom moulded the Hebrew slaves into a great nation. Moses knew that it was not any greatness in himself that made him successful. It was the greatness of the all-powerful God in whom he trusted. I'll leave you now with a fabulous quote from D.L. Moody. <laughs>